Hi, my name is Mark and welcome to the channel. If you are here because you've recently stumbled upon one of my Shetland travel videos, or if you've been with me for months, for almost a year now as I've been posting on YouTube, thanks for joining me. Today I'm talking all about my first official make-along. This is for knitters and crocheters alike, so if any part of you has any interest in joining me for a make-along project, stick around for this video and we'll discuss all the details. Let's get into it. If you've been with me since the beginning, or at least for the last few months, then you've seen me working on swatches and ideas for the sea glass sweater, specifically the sea glass cardigan from Wool and Pine. Several of you have reached out in the comments and said at various times in the history of my channel that some sort of make-along, some sort of knit-along, crochet-along, craft-along would be a fun thing to do together, and I couldn't agree more. So today this video is the official launch of that make-along, and I'm going to walk you through how you can let me know you're interested, how you can officially sign up, and just some details of how to get started with this sea glass make-along. So first things first, what is the sea glass sweater? What are the sea glass patterns? Let's take a look here on Ravelry at the sea glass designs by Wool and Pine. So I'm here on Ravelry and I've actually put together a bundle with all of the sea glass patterns that they offer. So you'll see if you follow the link to my bundle, you can get to it from the pinned comment below in the comments for this video or in the description box. And you may already be a Ravelry friend of mine. If not, feel free to add me on Ravelry. I go through every week and check those messages and requests and I'd love to connect with you so that I can see what you're working on. That's something I love most about this whole journey of being here on YouTube. So looking at the patterns here in the collection, you'll see there are more than just sweaters. If you're feeling like doing a sweater, a t-shirt, a pullover, cardigan, go for it. I'm definitely doing the cardigan for myself, uh, but there are also smaller projects. If you're not a sweater person, maybe you have not knit or crocheted a sweater before, and this doesn't feel like the right time to jump into it, so choose a different pattern. They've got a hat, they've got a cowl, they also have a mini version for um, children's sizes. So if you feel like you want to do the construction of a garment, but not necessarily in your own size, your own adult size, you can make a mini for someone in your life. So one great thing about these sea glass patterns is that the idea behind them is to stash bust. If you have scraps of yarn, if you have full skeins, half skeins, a lot of leftovers from other projects or projects that just didn't come together uh, in the way you initially planned when you purchased that yarn, then this is a great way to use some of those colors. You could do a sweater or hat, cowl, that uses all different colors, random bits of all of your scraps, or you could do something a bit more cohesive and a bit more planned. So in this make-along process, we're going to talk about how to do all of those things. So if you feel like doing this with friends, doing it with uh, an accountability system, then this might be the right thing for you. So how do you sign up? Uh, how do you let me know that you're interested? And how do you make sure that you're not missing out on any of the events or gatherings going on with this make-along? So for that, I'm going to walk you through a Google form that I've put together. You don't have to have a Google account or a Gmail account. Uh, you should be able to access this form just by, just by following the link. Excuse me. Again, this link is something you can find in the pinned comment below the video, or you can find it in the description box. If you're having trouble, feel free to leave me a comment, feel free to send me an email, a message on Ravelry, and I'll reply to you with the same link to get you there to the sign up. Once we're there, let's take a look at the form. Just in case you have any questions, if you're not a Google form person and this is the first time you're doing it. So I just wanted to find a way to make sure I know who out there in the world is making this along with me. So I think eventually once I get your responses and I have an email list, 
I'll probably put together a Ravelry group for those of you that like to use Ravelry, but I know some of you might not be on Ravelry. You might not be on Instagram. Uh, YouTube might be the only place you see me. So for that, I'm collecting emails just to make sure that I can give you all of the updates through this process. So let's take a look at the form. So you know you're in the right place because it says Mark's Sea Glass Make Along with a picture of one of my swatches up top. Now it shows an email address here. That's my Maker Mark Knits email address that I'm already logged into this browser with, but it says that it's not shared. So it's not actually telling me what account you've used to fill this out. There's a place later for you to put your preferred email address. So I'm not learning anything about you except for what you choose to share in the responses. So the first thing is to put an email down so that I can contact you about the make along. I'll put mark at mark.com, even though that's not my real email address, it's the example of what you'd put down. Then a place for your name. Again, it won't tell me who you are when you fill this out, so you'll have to let me know that you're filling it out. So you can put your first name and a last initial. You can put your whole name if you'd like. I just want to know uh, what name goes with what email so that I can address you throughout the process. And then the important information for me is which pattern do you think you'll make during this make along? And I say here, it's fine if you change your mind later. You can change your mind and start something else midway through. I just want to have a general idea of what everyone's planning to make so I know what information to share in my support videos and for the gatherings that we'll have. So all of the options are listed here and then the link follows them. So if you click on the link after the title of the pattern, it will take you to the Ravelry page where you can see details like the size ranges or the weight of yarn recommended or example pictures of what people have actually done with that project. So select the one you think you'll make. I'll say the knit sea glass cardigan because that's the choice that I'm doing for sure. And then a question about the timeline. So of course, if you've chosen to make the hat versus a sweater, you might finish faster than somebody who's making the sweater. So depending on your choice you've made, let me know the comfortable date you think you could complete the project by. And I do have an option here that says, I think I'll need more time, which is fine. Uh, it's not a race. Everybody works at a different pace. So none of this is about finishing in exact timing with someone else, but um, I want to have a general idea of when you think you could comfortably finish, and it's okay if that answer is after the dates I've given. You can also select multiple here. So if you think February or March, you can select both. And then there's a spot for you to share anything else you'd like me to know. It could just be a little comment. It could be something specific about your plan for the make along. Um, it could be something you think that you would like to see from the make along materials. If you know you'd like assistance with something or a targeted video or Zoom gathering, anything that would really make this process the most enjoyable for you, let me know there in the, uh, the blank space. If you don't have anything in mind, you can leave it blank, no problem. And then I end with a note about swatching. Uh, it's a little bit like what I've said in this video, but I'm sure some people will wind up looking at this form and they won't have watched this video yet, so I have some of the same information there. There is a space for you to put something down, but I'm not asking a question, so there's no answer that you need to put. So you can leave it blank and submit. If for any reason you've submitted the form and you've left something off, like your name, or maybe you've changed your mind about the pattern, you could submit it again and put a note that you've changed your mind, or you could just send me an email about it once I've sent out the information for the make along. Hopefully that made some sense to you. Again, if not, feel free to send me an email at makermarknits at gmail.com or write to me on Ravelry or Instagram if you use those platforms, and I'm happy to help walk you through it to make sure that you can take part. I'm most excited to get to know you through this process, to see your progress alongside mine, and then hopefully end up with a new hat, a new cowl, or maybe a new sweater or t-shirt. And again, this is something that has sort of 
endless creativity tied to it. You could use your stash yarn, you could trade with friends if you have local crafters, you could buy new yarn just for the project. You could go any direction with this and hopefully end up with something that represents colors you love, textures you love, and part of your journey as a crafter. I'm still in the United Kingdom on my honeymoon on this big trip that my husband and I have been taking, and so I don't have my rainbow swatches, the ones that I'll use for my sweater with me, but I do have sort of the test run sweater that I've been doing for my friend Megan. And these are out of the colors that she put together. So I just wanted to show it here on camera um, to give you an idea of what it's like almost in person, more than just a picture, but looking at it on camera. So you get a great texture. This is DK weight wool, and I'm using about five colors here, and I am using a carry through. So the light gray that you'll see is alternated every other stitch throughout. So we end up with stripes, sort of micro stripes, and then we get the succession of all of the contrast colors. So that's one way to do this. Um, we'll talk about it in some of the swatching videos and swatching gatherings that I have associated with the make along, but there are different ways you can pace your colors. You can use all random, and you can change them every row. So that would be the most colorful, random, sort of kaleidoscope version possible. Or you can do that repeating rows. You can take all random colors, but each row happens twice. So it extends that shift a little bit. If you're someone who's planning to do a carry through color, a base color, you can use that like I am in Megan's example, where every other stitch you use the carry through. You could also extend that, like I talked about with the random colors, so that each shift of contrast color happens for two rows before you change, instead of just one, if you like the idea of uh, sort of a thicker band of stripe or less shifting. The whole idea behind all of the patterns is one by one color work. You're always meant to be alternating uh, one stitch followed by a contrast, coming back to the original color and a contrast. And that's not a terribly difficult technique, so if it's new to you, we'll walk you through it. Um, Wool and Pine has their own resource videos to help with the pattern along the way. I'll also sit down to make videos to share how I'm holding my yarn, how I'm tensioning things, and just making it a more comfortable ergonomic experience. So if you've already done color work, there's nothing new for you. If it's your first time, we'll walk you through and there'll be some resources along the way. Now that I've covered how to sign up, how to let me know you're interested, and sort of the general range of the patterns available, I want to take just a few minutes to talk about my journey, my experience getting to the colors that I've chosen for the sweater, because you might be at that point. <laughs> if you haven't already picked out what you'd like to use, that's the next step. So I'm thinking of September for swatching, and we'll do an October 1st kickoff for this make-along, and then in the form, as you saw, you can let me know what feels like a comfortable finish date, what feels like an attainable, realistic date for you to get whichever project you've chosen off the needles. And of course it's okay if you don't finish along with everyone else, but I want to get a general idea of what we want as a group to have some benchmarks and goals in place. So if you're joining me, if you're excited about this knit or crochet along, let's talk a little bit about getting to those color combinations. I have some footage here from me two months ago, just about back at my local shop around the table yarns in Shaker Heights, Ohio, where I'm with Megan and Eliza looking at sort of countless combinations of Sweet Georgia Tough Love Sock. Sweet Georgia is one of my favorite fibers. They have a huge range of colors and all of the colors play pretty well together. So I thought that would be a great place to start for creating my own sea glass sweater. And you'll see in these video clips, we have a lot of colors in front of us. <laughs> there are a lot of options. And I went back and forth for about two weeks. I even swatched a couple of colors that I didn't end up using. So if you have colors in front of you at home that you're considering, the best way to start narrowing it down is to take a few of them and wrap them around a finger, wrap them around a piece of cardboard or a color card to get an idea of how they'll actually work in succession and how they'll stack up next to one another. 
So you can see some of that in the pictures and video that I'm sharing here. Once you think you have a combination that's a winner, that you really like, I would recommend actually swatching it. You don't have to do an enormous swatch, but you should at least do 20, 30 stitches across, and then play with those colors. Play with the one by one color work, try changing them every row, maybe paste them out two rows at a time to see if you like that look better, and then play around with the order. Uh, for my swatch, I initially tried rainbow color order, which is really beautiful, and then I tried it in a different order that sort of put the colors next to each other in um, a complementary color scheme. So purple with gold and blue with orange, things like that. And I think I like that better for myself. You can see a longer version of this thought process in my sea glass swatching video that I posted a month or two ago. I'll make sure to link that below as well. So that's the most effective way to take a world of colors, narrow them down a bit, and make sure you're happy with the results. So the first thing I'd recommend is just look at what you have. Look at colors that inspire you if you have a local shop. Look online. If you don't have an online shop, look at Around the Table. They ship out daily, and I think it's a great yarn shop. It's my favorite shop in the world. So check there if you don't have another idea of where to start. Once you have those colors together, maybe wrap them around a color card or a piece of cardboard and just see how they're stacking up. See what you think you like, and then after that, you can jump into the swatching. As I mentioned before, part of this make-along is going to include gatherings along the way, and several of those gatherings will happen over on Patreon. Some of them will also happen here on the main channel, and part of that for September will include swatching, sort of show and tell of what we're all working on, what we think we like, and maybe getting opinions from people. So all of this starts now with swatching and gathering ideas with an official kickoff on October 1st. Okay, I think that's it for now. Make sure to follow the link to sign up for this make along if you're interested in joining me. I wanna to start to gather those email addresses and figure out what people think they're going to make just to help me gauge the timeline of this make along and what sort of gatherings and resources I should put out there through Patreon and through this YouTube channel. If there's anything I've missed or anything you have lingering questions on, feel free to leave them below or feel free to submit them through the Google form. There's a place for that at the end of it. And as always, thank you so much for being here with me. I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of these travel videos, some updates on my projects, and once I'm home to the States, I can't wait to show you the yarn I've bought, my souvenirs, and tell you more stories about this great trip that I've had. So thanks for joining me today. I appreciate any time you choose to spend on the channel with me. And as always, happy knitting, happy crocheting, and happy crafting to you. Thanks so much, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>